You know what? This government doesn't have the intention to assist mm. whistleblowers. The moment they heard who I was, I, I, I even obtained his number. Mm. I called him. I sent him messages. He, he's blue ticking. <laughs> the moment, moment he heard who I was, he just removed himself from the situation. So this government is not willing and will never be willing to protect and assist whistleblowers. And that I'm, I'm saying because of what happened to me. I'm telling you, I was with mm. the deputy uh, 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 president of the ANC. Good morning, everybody. This is Sorry Moving El World View again. Here's another conversation. We have we host a lot of very interesting conversations, not just not just for the sake of talking here at Worldview, but to get people to, to share their insights with us on things that really, really impact our world, our world in South Africa, our world in Africa, our global world. And we try to find solutions on how best to approach these things, what solutions are needed in order to change the world for the better for all of us. So today, I'm having this discussion again. Well, it's not the same discussion, but it's the same guest, Patricia Mashale. As many of you have seen him, seen her before. She's an activist. She's been she's an activist, but also a whistleblower in South Africa against corruption in the South African police services. And and she has not been left alone in peace to live her life. Actually, there is this silent persecution that happens to many people in South Africa. It's very hard to complain legally about it unless you have facts, because people will just look at you and say, what are you talking about? So I thought maybe there's an opportunity for us, we should take another opportunity to have a conversation to continue where we left off with Patricia the last time. Patricia, good morning. Uh, good morning, Soli. It's lovely to see you again. Having... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for having me again. <laughs> I think it's important to have these conversations, uh, Patricia, like I said, not for the sake of entertainment, but because these things must be put out there. If we don't put them out there, other people put other narratives out there, and those narratives become the ones that help people shape their views, their opinions on what happened. And a lot of times when those narratives are, uh, they come from the same, from the wrong places, people with, with, with manipulation in mind or intentions, uh, then the world goes on as if things are fine when things are not fine. So what's been going on with you? What do, since we last hey, spoke? Uh, sorry, uh, like you said, this uh, amounts to silent prosecution or what did I, I, retaliation. Right. Uh, because um, as I told you when we spoke on the phone um, on the 17th of um, November, mm -hmm. I received, now the 17th of, of January, as this year, right. I received an SMS from a GPF, that is the Government Employee Pension Fund, a notification that mm -hmm. my pension uh, withdrawal was paid out. Mm -hmm. So I was shocked because uh, I did not apply for, 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 for my pension withdrawal. And uh, the, the last time it was on the First of November, when I received the notification mm. from GPF mm. that uh, my uh, pension withdrawal application was received. GPF, called, GPF for people who don't understand that government pension fund. Government employee pay, yeah. pension fund. Okay. Yes. Right. I received a notification on the first of November informing me that my um, pension withdrawal application was received mm. uh, that morning. Mm. I called them and I asked them, uh, I was shocked because I never apply for pen pension withdrawal application since I'm still challenging my so-called dismissal. Remember, uh, I only received the notification that I was dismissed. Mm -hmm. I never received a termination letter. Right, right. So uh, I'm still in the process of, of, of challenging that uh, because uh, I never had a formal disciplinary hearing so I don't understand how was I, was I dismissed without mm. a, a, a hearing. Right. So I'm still waiting for the termination letter. So now come this SMS that now uh, my pension application is in the process 
of 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 uh they are uh, busy processing it and i on inform gpf i told him i say you know what i never applied for, for applied for uh for my withdrawal of my mm. pension application right, right. and uh who submitted the application and they told me that the south african police service submitted the application all my documents were were, were, were submitted i don't know where they mm. got my documents and uh, all the documents were signed and i told them i say now i'm telling you uh i i never i don't know about this application mm. i never submitted the application right. and i expected them to red flag it yeah and and yet not proceed with the application since i as the owner of the mm. pension mm. informed them that i don't know anything about the pension right. so on 17 january uh that's uh, recently I received a notification that my pension was paid out. And I <laughs> I called GPF again and asked them, I say, I did call you on the 1st of November, red flagging mm -hmm. this application. Mm -hmm. And now the pension is paid out. And the consultant that was assisting me and for me that they received a letter from the South African Police Service mm -hmm. with my application, informing them, them that I'm dismissed. And I ask him, I say, can you please email that letter to me? Mm -hmm. Because I want to see who signed the letter since I I have no such letter of this right. right. And he say, no, we can't. Uh, if I want any information, I must go to the high court. Jeez. And they know <laughs> that you have to spend a lot of money at the high court. They, they know, know that, that basically they're yes. trying to ruin you. I mean, they can continue running like this on yes. state, on, 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 public, state, on, state on the state. public purse, but you can't. But I can. Sh surely there's been, I mean, there is, there's also a case of fraud here. Somebody somebody stole your identity or somebody used your signature fraudulently to get these things, these processes running. That, that cannot be allowed to of, go on. Definitely a case of fraud uh, solely because with all the laws that we have in our country for the protection of our, our identities, for the protection of our ID, we have so many laws yeah. to protect yeah. our, our information excess information protection but yeah uh, uh my money have been taken my information have not been protected my money have been taken without my my, my consent by a law enforcement agency submitted by a law enforcement agency calling themselves the south african police service to an agency who was supposed to protect my money Right. I trusted them to protect my money. This is, this is incredible. So basically, your money has been paid. Somebody completed all the forms. Your money was eventually, on the basis of those forms, signed by we don't know whom. Your money was paid out. We don't know to whose bank account. And then you get notified, oh, but you signed these documents. Your money has been paid out. But you haven't seen any of that stuff. No. I asked them why, where, in whose account is the money paid in, right. and they said that it's paid into the unclaimed benefits fund. And I asked them, but for what good reason? Take my money out, yeah. <laughs> out yeah. of, of, of my right. account, right. and then right. go and pay it in the, it's still with GPF for that matter. So why the move, the shift from mm. this to that, while I didn't give any consent? Yeah, I mean, they, 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 look, they just somebody is obviously trying to frustrate you, and 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 and. But I believe that when the law kicks in, because it will at some point, your money will come back to you. I don't see how they can forever not be forced at some point to return your money to you. But let's talk about these individuals, some of whom you've made serious uh, allegations against. But they, you've provided proof of some of their wrongdoing because they are connected politically at the highest levels, including with Minister Becky Kelly. Yes. They, they, they ended up being promoted into positions of, of influence. Tell us about these people. You know what? Uh, uh, recently, I also uh, came across a situation whereby the legal advisor of mm. Becky Kelly has now been appointed is the SAPS, uh, the, the uh, national head of mm. legal services in, in SAPS. And this man had a criminal case against him, mm. together with Becky Kele. Both of them, there was a case open against both of them back in 2020. Mm. Now, the, he and Becky Kele, the, the case was open because they must use state funds. Mm. 
Right. Basically, they use this. So you, you opened the case against them. The, the case was not opened by me. Okay. The case was opened by, by, by advocate uh, 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 Mal, uh, Stella back in 2020. Okay. So I, spoke, I, 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 I added myself as a person of interest in this mm -hmm. case, mm -hmm. and I got information. Mm -hmm. And according to the information is that legal services, South African Police Service legal services, have been delaying since 2020 to give a statement mm -hmm. uh, to the investigation officer. Right. And remember, just imagine, investigation officer is just a mere lieutenant colonel who must now investigate the minister. Right. So now the minister that now went and appointed his legal advisor in the very legal services who's supposed to provide a statement to the investigation officer. Yeah. So there's always so the conflict. How yeah, so. is that poor investigation officer going to ever get a statement? Because now they, they are now there to cover the right. text. Right. But, but he's basically, the, I mean, in South African language, he's basically deployed to ensure nothing happens to Becky Kelly. The he's nice deployed. thing about this is that the docket has already been opened. The docket must go to the NPA. Should right. the NPA be time to prosecute, then as we are now a lot of persons of interest in this case. Mm -hmm. Then we will take the, it up with every forum to mm -hmm. assist us with private prosecution. Yeah, perhaps and you so should even... the route we are yeah. going to go now. Yeah, perhaps maybe it let Afri Forum know what's coming, or hopefully they, some of them will see this interview and prepare themselves, because we cannot allow these people to keep going we on the way allow. they are doing. They had in not just same, here, in South Africa. Yes, same in... with the National Commissioner. The right. National Commissioner, there was already a case by IPED opened against mm. the National Commissioner back in 2017 right. for uh, 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 corruption, fraud, Mm -hmm. in, in uh, 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 receiving of bribes. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's the reason why uh, 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 Robert McBride was removed from IPAD because he was about to arrest Fanny Masomula and yeah. other uh, generals. Right. And, and Becky, Taylor, uh, Becky Taylor was part of the people who was going to be arrested by Robert McBride. Mm -hmm. That's why, and, and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying this because I heard it from someone. Right. I have document. I have. I have documentary proof. I have it. Should someone now come and say he's, he's going to sue me? I have mm. all the evidence. I have case numbers. I have everything. I know all the generals who are supposed to be arrested. They and they, is, they are still in the system. They They're are still, still powerful. And now, and now, mm. Masimola, with mm. this case over his head, has mm. now became the national commissioner. Right. While there was a case already opened by IPEC back in 2017 against him and the provincial commissioner of KZN. So all the people who have cases against them, who have, I have a lot of case numbers, Soli. I have, mm. I have, I, have I, 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 I can, I can, you will, your hair will raise if you can see what I have. But so, I'm going to use it. I'm mm. going to, to, to expose these case numbers. Mm. I'm going to expose these people. Should NPA not prosecute, then, I'm going to talk with every forum to take all these cases. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would advise you. I'm not a legal mind, but I would really certainly say to you, speak to every forum even before it happens. Because I you, already, the, the best I already, thing to find these things is not to, to find them on your own, but to get as many people aware of what's going on as possible. Because I know that there have been attempts to call you into private meetings where, in one instance, at least they, they wanted you to come on your own. And uh, there was supposed to be a meeting with the president. We were apparently it's postponed. What's, what's what's going on in that area of you um, meeting? Home? You know what happened in December? In December, I was contacted by. Um, uh, I know this guy is from foreign intelligence. He's working at the office of the Inspector General of Intelligence. Right. He sent me an email uh, uh, with a Yahoo email address. That's what's raised the red flag. Right, right. But you, do know you, know him? you knew him before? I know before. Okay. I, I knew him before because when my phone was unlawfully seized, uh, he was part of the team who came to investigate. He's, I know he's from foreign intelligence. There was right. a lady uh, from uh, crime intelligence, and there mm. was a, another lady from, uh, uh, I, ca I can't remember, there, but there was mm. three or three. I know mm. this guy. Right. He sent me an email to tell me that uh, he, he must urgently meet with me on the 20th of December. Mm -hmm. uh, because 
he, he has been appointed to investigate the seizure of my phone. I right. send him a few questions to say, you know what? Where is the chief investigator? Mm -hmm. The one that I spoke to, the one that I gave statements to, the one that I gave all my evidence to, the mm -hmm. one who told me that, she's, that she, the, the investigation is finalized mm -hmm. and that she's only waiting for the Inspector General of Intelligence to sign. Right. At the time, there was, the, the, the post was vacant mm -hmm. because the, the, the Inspector General's contract uh, was, uh, came to an end. So mm -hmm. there was no inspector general. And she told me, you know what? Uh, I'm waiting for the new inspector general of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So they can just sign the report off. The last word she said to me, she said, you're going to be shocked. You're going wow. to be shocked uh, to what I was told by uh, Colonel van der Merve. Mm -hmm. Colonel van der Merve is the one who seized my phone unlawfully with a fraudulent uh, seize, a search and seizure. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 right. Where, then, where is it? Where's the phone now? Just quickly. My phone is still in the posi position of SPSN uh, 14 October 2021. Okay. My phone is still there. I've opened a case against uh, uh, Maya General Lucia mm -hmm. and against uh, Colonel Fana I mm -hmm. have a reliable information from the police station where I opened the case to say immediately after you opened the case against Mayor General Lucia and Panamera, Mayor General Lucia came and took the very dog, mm -hmm. <laughs> the case that you opened against him. He mm -hmm. is the suspect. He took the dog and he took the dog straight to the DPP. Up right. to today, since I opened that case, the DPP has not made a determination on that case yet. She is sitting on the docket. Yet I'm being prosecuted by the same DPP for mm. harassment against Lysia. I must go to court next week for spreading false allegations against Lysia. The DPP is pursuing me with protection orders that Lysia obtained against me for spreading false allegations against it. I don't have a problem, sorry. I don't have so, a problem. So this Fener Merve, where is he and what is he doing? Fener Merve have now been promoted. Mm. He's now a brigadier. He's now in uh, in charge of investigations. Right. So, so what does that mean? A, all the investigations go to Fanamer. Right. Fanamera will decide which cases are being investigated or not. And obviously, been... obviously, he has a line, a straight line to the political boss. A straight line. Right. There's been uh, instructions issued by the by the Free State Subs Management. Mm. that no cases that are opened by me should be registered on the system. So I cannot go to any police station to open a case because those cases are not going to be registered. Right. Yet, the So what, 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 what will they do if you go to any police station? They'll just say, oh, what's your name, Patricia? They, they just Michelle. tell me, no, they just tell me, I will be opening the case that the, the poor uh, a sergeant or constable mm. will be uh, writing the docket in, in. Mm. When the docket is supposed to be registered on the system, then they will come and say, no, they got uh, legal opinions. There is mm. no criminal elements. So you've been registered. And my case you've will not be, my yeah. claim, it will be, it will be registered as an inquiry, inquiry right. internally investigated. It mm. will not go out to IPED. It will be internally investigated and I will just get an email to say there's no criminal elements in this case. That is what's happening to me. Yet, the SAPS management go to go to the, the domestic court to obtain mm. protection orders against me. Right, and right. then I'm being pursued criminally. What's the I, IP, I, what's IP I, doing in this? Was uh I mean Robert McBride, I know he's no longer there, so he was kicked off because he was becoming it, too clever for them or and uh, who's the new uh, guy? McBride, what's going on? Yeah. My, McBride was incorruptible. McBride didn't dance to Becky Kelly's shoes. McBride mm. I, he pursued corruption, he pursued criminality. Right. And that's why McBride was removed. Now, I can tell you, since McBride was removed from IPAD, IPAD is just there because Becky Taylor mm. is IPAD. IPAD is there to protect the corrupt, just like IPAD all the other is, institutions which have been uh, weakened and repurposed to defend the criminal cabal. Yes. IPAD is doing the same thing. IPAD is doing absolutely the same because IPAD is not. Uh, independent. You know what? The Corn Court issued a, 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 a judgment or mm. a, a order back mm. in 2016.
that IPAD should, Parliament should make sure that IPAD become independent from the minister. Right. 2016, Parliament right. never acted on that. Yeah. Maybe let's, let's explain the role of IPAD for those people who don't know. IPAD is responsible for investigating uh, criminality against police officers. Yeah. That is their responsibility. Yeah, but they're supposed, they're supposed to be entirely independent, especially they're from political influence. They're supposed to be in, uh, now, I put reports to the Minister of Police. So so what is the, that's that? How crazy is that? We're, not go, we, we're going nowhere slowly with what is happening in, in so, the South African Police Service, in law yeah. enforcement generally in South Africa. Let's go back to the point about the meeting. So somebody got in touch with you in December, they wanted to meet with you, and there have been other attempts to organize meetings with you. Mm -hmm. Now, this recent one was now of this Africa Zwani, mm -hmm. uh, who told me he, he had to meet me. I sent him those questions, and I told him that. And uh, you, you, you uh, uh, contact me with the Yahoo email. It's mm -hmm. making me very, very uncomfortable. Right. Can you now please... Uh, contact me with your uh, official email address mm -hmm. and also send me a, a, on an official appointment letter mm -hmm. signed by your by your boss, right. by the inspector general, like Norma Butelezi did. Right. And he told me that he can't do it. And I told him that since you can't do it, then I can't meet with you. Yeah. I can't. And this meeting, he made it so urgent because he said, I must, I must, I must be in Bloemfontein to meet with you like today. I told him that I'm not going to meet with you mm. if you cannot give me what I want. And then mm. I contacted uh, Professor Mary the Haas because mm. she's the one who's been assisting me writing letters to the, mm. to the uh, Office of the Inspector General, writing mm. letters to Parliament everywhere. Mm. So I contact them and say, you know what, Mary, I'm, I'm, I, I, I suspect that this is another attempt to call uh, to, to locate me. Right. Can you please contact the Office of the Inspector General and ask them whether they know about this? She contacted the office, mm. and, and the secretary or the person who spoke, who, who uh, uh, talked to her, mm -hmm. uh, told her that she's not aware of that. And I and I and I and I responded back to Advocate Zwani. I said, you know what? Um, I, 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 I suspect that this is an attempt to, 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 to um, locate me. Right, right. But I'm going to speak to your bosses and I'm going to get to... Oh, they, they, they're not just trying to locate you. They're trying to, to take you out of where you once are they into me, a place where they can possibly harm you. Once they locate me, yes. Once they locate me, it's, I'm finished. Yeah. And then he responded back to say, no, he's now been removed from the investigation and his uh, senior is now going to take over. So his senior is a uh, advocate, uh, AJ or J governor mm -hmm. called Mary and mm -hmm. told her now the reason why he contact me with the Yahoo uh, email address is because of load shedding. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, she is now going. But then he refused when you asked him to 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 to, to use the official email. He didn't say. He didn't mention he load didn't shedding. He didn't say it's because of load. And if it was because of load shedding, why couldn't he just uh, provide me with a with an official appointment letter? Hmm. I mean, yeah, that, you, that you, could, you could send it on, 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 on WhatsApp even. Yes, you can just send me the official appointment letter like, so that I can right. see that that is legitimate. There's a right. legitimate investigation. Right. And then, uh, yeah, Mary told me, she said, no, the advocate governor is his senior. And she said, now they are busy with the, 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 the mm -hmm. issue of my phone investigation. And, and what I don't understand fully is what, the, like I said, Norma Butelezi told me that the investigation is complete. Do you trust me. Norma Butelezi? I trusted Norma Butelezi mm -hmm. because you know why I'm saying this. Norma Butelezi is now suspended. Do you know Shortly why? Shortly after she completed the investigation, wow. I heard, yeah, I, 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 nev I never heard anything from her again. A phone went dead. I couldn't locate her. And Mary found out in December that Norma Butelezi has been shortly after she completed the investigation and she got suspended. So obviously somebody didn't like what so was in So obviously somebody didn't like that the, the last which is the yeah. shape
say to me was, you are going to be sure at what colonial father may have told you. Yeah. So somebody didn't like, and, and it's not, it's not, this, it's not even the only investigation mm. where people want uh, uh, reports to be changed. There was an investigation by, 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 by um, counterintelligence mm -hmm. whereby uh, 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 the national commissioner appointed Colonel Nube mm -hmm. to also come and investiga investigate the allegations and the issue of my phone. Right. Colonel Nube's report still now, she was also removed from the investigation because they told her a report of inconsistencies. He must change the report. She refused to change the report and say, you know what, you fall in where you feel Incons that you are not But inconsistent with what? With their yeah. view of the world? With what? And, and, and what happened there, now she was she was removed from mm -hmm. the investigation and a counter-investigation team was investigated, mm -hmm. uh, appointed not to investigate, mm -hmm. not to investigate the allegations, mm -hmm. but to find out who is the, the sources of my information. So that, there's the second report that, 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 that I, I still didn't have, that I still not there. Now, all, all my cases, they had been investigated. There's, you, you remember what the iPad report, the iPad report I got at the 99th hour with right. a lot of gaps and inconsistencies in it. Right. Right. Still, I'm challenging that iPad report. I mean, there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way for people like yourself to, and I'm sure there are many others. We should talk about that. Uh, to to access the legal system in a way that enables them these things to be processed, because it looks like there's a lot of red tape that, and they know they can play the red tape, so that you never really get to where you should be in terms of justice. Exactly, exactly. Because if you can find it, you know what, solely this this thing is so deep, ne? Mm. It doesn't. It doesn't end, begin or end with SAPS. It, yeah. like I said, it where it even goes up to the the, the office of the DPP. Where the DPP. Mm. I the last time when I was at court, I requested the magistrate to say, you know what? I don't mind if people open cases against me. Mm. Uh, and, and and you can ask yourself, why do they pursue me criminally mm. when they say I'm defaming their names? Right. What is what is the obvious thing to do in a cases of defamation? Right. Right. They must they must they must initiate several proceedings against me, because I have I have my my evidence that mm. I can go and provide. But mm. now I'm being pursued criminally, criminal. Now they they call it criminal defamation. But I still have my evidence. But now I'm sitting with a prosecution team who mm. are. Uh, 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 aligned with the same people that that, 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 that are pursuing me. Mal I'm maliciously being prosecuted. Have you but, ever tried to get it? Yeah, go ahead, Brown. But the last time when I was in court, I told the magistrate, I said, I don't mind. One million people can now come and stand in, mm. and open uh, a criminal defamation cases against me. Mm. I can stand my ground, but mm. at, at least give me a fair prosecution team. Give me a fair sure. trial. So right. what I requested from the from the magistrate to say, can you please remove this free state prosecution team and it, appoint a prosecution team from another province? Mm. And I know at least I would but, be but is trial. it the magistrate that appoints prosecution teams or is it no, is it the national director of the, of prosecutions? The thing is I made a request to the to the magistrate okay. in court. I okay. made a request to the magistrate in court, and the magistrate said, "You know what? I will. I will even go a step further. Mm -hmm. I will. I will even recuse myself because mm -hmm. I'm also from Free State. And then mm -hmm. we will write a letter to the national prosecution, uh, uh, to the NPA, to say they must now appoint a new uh, a new magistrate, mm -hmm. and they must appoint a new prosecution team from another province. I mean, and now I'm I'm yeah. comfortable with that solely because okay. now I know." at least then a new prosecution team that's going to come to prosecute mm. my cases doesn't have anything to do. No, yeah, well, let's hope so. Them. But I mean, is, is, I, Shamil, I hope so, yes. is Shamila Batohi, the National Director of Prosecutions, aware of these things? I mean, surely, given the level of people who are pursuing you, who are really making your life difficult, 
surely you should be able to make a presentation to her directly because these, these are not just you're not being treated as an ordinary citizen here you're almost being treated as the enemy of of the republic which is nonsense enemy enemy of the state shamila yeah. bato is definitely aware of this because the merida has wrote letters to her mm -hmm. on numerous occasions complaining about the, the chief uh, prosecutor and the senior prosecutor who, who, by the way, is husband and wife. Uh, they work in the same office. And Mary wrote numerous letters complaining about this. There was a time that Mary wrote a letter to her complaining about one right. of the people who are part of my group is that lady is a forensic uh, social worker. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she, she was also dismissed the same way in which mm -hmm. I was dismissed. Mm. She was also uh, uh, prosecuted for, for um, a, a, what do they call it? It was not a harassment, mm. uh, but uh, something in that lineup. Uh, right. uh, 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 yeah. And mm. this lady was detained in leg irons on, on mm. instruction of the same prosecutor. She was detained in leg irons in, in, the, in the cells. Why? Just, you know what? I, I, uh, those people, they, they just love it to show muscle. And Mary the has was like, you know what? Even, even seasoned murderers and rapists are not being detained in leg irons in the cells. When they come into the courts, usually the magistrate will say, can you please remove the, mm. the leg irons? Right. And Shamila <laughs> Batoy respond to say that it's usual practice to do wow. that. So wow. she's well aware of what is going in on in, 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 in I have it on good Those. authority to say that Shamila Batoy knows about what is happening in Fritze and she's not acting at all. I was hoping that you would be the first person in the whole entire world who would say something that would give me no. faith that maybe Shamila Batoy is. Unfortunately not. Well, I'm disappointed in her. Like many South Africans are, they don't know what she's doing there. She's just earning a salary, making an occasional speech to make an excuse. So far, you know, there was a time during the Zondo Commission when even Judge Zondo, before the Commission finished its hearings, he said, look, the NPA doesn't have to wait for us to finish. We're making the, the evidence that we have available to the NPA to use to act against these people. And then they, she no longer had an excuse to say, "Oh, we're just waiting for the end for the Zona Commission to finish." She had all the access to the to, to, to the same uh, evidence. Now people who make excuses for her like to say, "Oh, yeah, but the kind of evidence that comes from the commission is not good enough. They need further further investigation." I, there's no indication that I mean even Jacob Zuma, who is the head hon the head honcho together with the Guptas and Instant Dudozani. Of state capture, there's no indication that they're being investigated for state in, capture. In it's some everything, yeah, what is going on in South Africa? I mean, I mean, Shamila Batohi, is she, is she, she's probably a political deployee of the of the ANC. That's why they, they told you you can touch this, you can touch this, you can't touch that. And a lot of the people that she goes for are the people that are that that, that have fallen out of favor. So what? Yes, with the with, with the with the main uh, political Definitely. faction. And yeah. I'm saying. Here is Fanny Masimola. I put already charged him years ago for mm. corruption. The NPA only came in November to take a warning statement from him and the, and the, and the provincial commissioner of, 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 of uh, uh, KZN. Right. Both of them are still at work. <laughs> Both of them are still at work. Yeah, they're obviously so in what the does they tell you? Yeah. What does yeah. it tell you? Of course, it tells everything. Because that the it moment does. you are being, you are being, I mean, this or he was already charged. Now come the NPA and say, now we are, we are now gunning for for mm. Masimula in 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 Mkwanazi. Mm. They they only take their winning statements while me must go to sales for 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 for, for allegation of spreading false allegations against the SPS. I will be sent to jail if it's up to them for spreading false allegations. There was, there, there was a meeting that was supposed to take place between you and the president. I mean, not uh, around the conference of the ANC or something like that. Is it? I mean, what happened there? Is it... Yes, I met. I met with, 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 with a deputy. Um, not met. I ambushed. 
I ambushed the, 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 the deputy uh, president of the of the ANC well, while he was here, while he was here with it, ANC uh, uh, birthday celebrations. Mm -hmm. That's Paul Machatele, right? Uh, I told him, yeah. yes, I told him, yeah, I am, I'm a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. You are, you, you probably, you are, are, go, are, are becoming the next deputy president. So mm -hmm. before you coming the next deputy president, yeah, I am in front mm -hmm. of, of you. Right. And then he knows about me. He knew me very well, mm -hmm. and then was like, "No, let me just give me your, my speech." Mm -hmm. And then right after this, we will go in the office. It was an elder. We will mm -hmm. will go in the office and talk. Mm -hmm. So I was giving him a chance to give. So his wait a minute. Did you say he knew he knew about you before you, you even ambushed him? He, he, be, be, but when I introduced myself to okay. him, right. he okay. knew who I was. He even asked me, "Are you the whistleblower?" I say yes. Okay. Right after he made his speech, that man, that man got into the car and and yes. I was I was standing right next to him. He opened off his car and he watched his security guards pushing me away. And I said, but, but you said you're going to talk. And he, he was and was gone. He was gone. And he was gone. And gone. from there on, I told myself, I said, you know what? This government doesn't have the intention to assist mm. whistleblowers. The moment that he heard who I was, I, I even obtained his number. Mm -hmm. I called him. I sent him messages. Mm -hmm. he, he's blue ticking. <laughs> the moment, moment he heard who I was, he just removed himself from the situation. So this government is not willing and will never be willing to protect and assist whistleblowers. And that I'm, I'm saying because of what happened to me. I'm telling you, I was with mm. the deputy uh, 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 president of the ANC. Isn't the there, I mean, become for somebody in your position, yeah, is it, are there no channels like outside South Africa? I mean, given that you are being blocked from all directions in South Africa by people who should be doing their jobs, especially the NPA, which doesn't seem to be remotely interested in what's, what's going on. They should be. I mean, if I were head of the NPA, I would be saying, good, I would be appointing one of my best prosecutors to look into this case and get it done with, but it's not happening. Uh, surely there must be a way for you to go to the, I don't know, the International Criminal Court or elsewhere, because we have exhausted uh, the best that we could. Yes. The, the South African mm -hmm. channels. If you're going to sit there, the same people still sit in power, the same people keep deploying one another and their deployees, people who are at their beck and call into the system to frustrate you. So nothing's going to happen. Why don't you, I mean, is there a way to appeal to, to, to an overseas global institution? Me and Mary are now busy to write a letter to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. Okay. to pursue it through the International Criminal Court. Okay. I will also try, me and Mary must also try to, to, to involve Paul, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, Interpol. Yes, to involve you Interpol. Yeah. In, 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 because the, the, the kind of, of, of report that mm. I have in my possession, sorry, mm. Mm. the kind of report that I have in my possession shows there was an attempt to to I can I can even say it amounts to high treason the way forces within crime intelligence mm -hmm. uh, 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 exposed the, 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 the security of our country right. Yeah. I can even I can <laughs> even say it amounts to high treason yeah, I, I have spoke. the report mm -hmm. I have the report in my position and I will hand it over to Interpol. If the South African uh, government, mm. uh, not if, because the South African government showed me. They, they Did have you, no I think, interest. Have you made copies account. of this report so that if they seize one I version don't, I of don't them... just make copies. Okay. I don't just make copies. I make sure it's in the hands of okay. people that I trust. Okay. I don't okay. just make copies for myself. I yeah. make sure that I also give it to people that I trust. So that I, should something happen to me, then I know there's yeah. some other people who also have it. So and I so, have that report and mm -hmm. I will hand it over to Interpol. 
Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's significant also that we recall a point that we discussed in our last interview about guns, you know, stolen guns yes. disappearing yes. in the system, lots of guns that yes. that were, that are supposed to be transported from one from point A to point B by the SAP is disappearing on route, not making it even the records of their disappearance disappearing, so, which means that there's a lot of collusion in the system. We've heard of reports of guns that find themselves in the streets, in the camp flares. These guns that are, kill are, are killing our children throughout South Africa uh, that are being used for hijacker by for hijackings, kidnap kidnappings, and all sorts of other crimes. Many of them come from the police system and the police can't pretend to be looking for them because somebody is making money out of these things. These are, exactly. maybe some of them are making them, them their way into Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Botswana and other places. So it becomes a global and international crime syndicate and Interpol should be interested in it. Not maybe. I'm telling you the, 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 the information on the guns that I have. I, I, receive, I receive new information on the judges and involved, banks are involved, <coughs> magistrates are involved. It's a cartel. It's magistrates a, and judges magistrates. are involved in South Africa? The master's courts are involved. A state firearms are being are being signed off by the master's court to criminals. These guns are being licensed by the by the central firearm register. I have all the information in my possession solely. All I have to do, like I said, is to hand it up. You know what happened at work? At work, remember, I was the one who blew the whistles on the on the on the on the smuggling of the of the of the uh, firearms that was meant for destruction right. i printed all <laughs> those documents i printed all those documents i kept it in the box mm -hmm. i i printed another box mm -hmm. similar to my 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 box for, the duplicate. for, for you the made hogs, a duplicate yeah. for the hogs the duplicate for the hogs right. the right. ones that i kept in my office i i recently received uh, information from my colleagues mm -hmm. that on instruction of the of this of the free state management the commanders mm -hmm. that box of documents have been shredded wow. they shredded it they even went as with all my with all my files the files of everything that i have they mm -hmm. even went a step further to wipe the computer that I worked on. I mean, surely these people should be interested in evidence that helps them, that would yes. help them look good for doing, yes. for curbing crime in South Africa, yes. not for destroying evidence. I mean, they even, you know, you, you remember when you requested uh, uh, my CV? Yeah. So my CV was on my computer at work. Mm -hmm. And I requested a colleague of mine and say, can you just, I don't, I don't have my, 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 my previous laptop where my CV was of my laptop crashed with all right. my other uh, uh, documents. So I know that every time my CV on my computer, if I have to update my CV, I had mm -hmm. a folder with all my document, my personal right. documents on my computer. Mm -hmm. My colleague told me, say, no, they said the computer is wiped. But who, who is giving they these instructions? They, 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 who they, gives this instruction? Sita yeah. is the state uh, IT uh, administration. Oh, yes. Sita right. was in Sita was came, uh, was instructed to come and wipe the computer. Now was instructed, Sita came and installed a new uh, email address on the computer. Mm -hmm. That's why they wiped the computer. Mm -hmm. I say there's a blue lie. Sita always make up a bag uh, always make a backup of mm. all your your, your documents right, right. whenever they work on your computer they will never wipe yeah, and, I mean, and they don't make sense official, official, official in a, in a, documents yeah. official documents because all my of all my official documents all my official correspondence yeah. Everything is on the computer. Yeah. Official documents cannot be deleted or wiped or shredded yeah. or destroyed. Never. So, so let's do this again. We also did it in a previous interview, but just for the sake of people who are watching this interview, tell tell the world what your job was in the South African Police Services. My job in the South African Police Services, I worked in the in the Central Firearm Registry of Free State. Mm -hmm. I my job was to monitor all firearm applications in the province and for, for 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 your information i was the only one who had that function in the entire free state there was no one else when i was not at work no one could do my work 
when I was on leave, my commander at the end of the month or uh, the, 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 the beginning of the month, when it's time for the submission of the returns to the national office and I'm not at work, my commander always called me and said, can you please come in and come in and withdraw the information for us on the system because you're the only one who can do it. Mm -hmm. And the only information that I would draw was the accurate information because there's a certain uh, uh, um, uh, um, function that I have and there's a certain <laughs> certain system called J track whereby right. you can it's called the J J3 track J track okay. whereby you they, that system shows you all the application that mm. was captured on the mm. system. So right. I would draw my information from the J track system. Mm. I will go and and, and and withdraw information on on, on, on firearms. Mm. Uh, uh, that uh, that was uh, 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 let me say how many firearms were were were, 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 were firearm applications were received, mm. how many firearm applications were were processed, mm. how many firearm applications were approved, how many firearm mm. applications were 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 declined mm -hmm. for that. For that month, for would, that it, would it include some kind of oversight over firearms that were handed over in by the, into the police from time to time? You know, there's a request for yes. people who don't yes. need guns to hand them over for destruction. Yes. Yes. Those as well. Also included because usually my 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 I, I uh, my commander gave me the days how I came across the, mm. the, the 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 transactions of those firearms that they've been sold. They've been right. removed from the system because right. my commander now so you know what I want to do an inventory of mm. all the firearms in the system. Mm. He started working at a fire at our office in 2017. So immediately after he arrived, he found this 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 as a mess, this chaos in the in the, uh, mm. uh, the storage facility. Mm. And then he started to say there's no order here. The firearms are not being recorded. Firearms that's coming in are not being recorded. Right. And I have also had a function to check every week. We, we usually had a weekly meeting before my mm. commander arrived here. And my function was that was give, given by the by the deputy provincial commissioner to mm. check on a, to give him feedback on a weekly basis as to how many firearms we received mm -hmm. and how many firearms went out for destruction. Right. And that number stayed on, I can remember the number stayed on like uh, 14,000 for almost a year. And I raised my concern to say, but it can be, we receive firearms every Tuesday, but how come? The, 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 the number doesn't increase. And when this new commander come now, is and I, I, I told him, I raised my concerns to him, he mm -hmm. said, you know what, let's do an inventory. You mm -hmm. went to the storage facility to find there's a register. How many, no, so how many firearms arrived, more or less, every Tuesday? More or less, all stations bring firearms on Tuesdays. But so how, more how, or less, let me say, every Tuesday, they, 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 they can receive about 100 firearms. Yeah. Okay. They can every Tuesday they can receive about hundred firearms. Are these new ones for police use or ones that have been? No, no, no. Those firearms is firearms that are forfeited to the okay. state. Firearms that they have been handed. Right. In. Firearms right. that have been confiscated. Those kinds okay. of firearms. Okay. But it's all firearms that are meant for destruction. Right. So those firearms. So now we found that that when I I came across this this um transactions i mm. found that by these firearms because every firearms that come into the to the, the storage facility mm. must have a file right uh, the, 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 they must have be a, a file opened at the station mm. the station mm. must open and do you like take a picture of it as well no mm. at, the, at, the, at the storage facility person working at the storage facility must keep the so every, each and every firearm or ammunition, a bullet or whatever, there must be record. It must record that there must be a file, everything. Right. So I, I, I came across, he said, let us do an inventory. And he gave me the list. Mm -hmm. And I started doing the inventory from 2017. Mm -hmm. And going through the inventory, I found a lot of firearms have been removed from the system. And the records, and the records the were the on put on the names of 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 different dealers wow. in different provinces <laughs> so i printed 
all those documents. You see the, these paper boxes. How do they? How box. do they get? So they were given to different gun dealers. Yes. So and there's now, a gun shop in Cape Town or in Johannesburg, wherever they receive guns that were everywhere. Copied. So yeah, basically, so they, they're being put out for resale. They're being put out for resale. Yes, for resale. For and resale, the, it goes to the to the. Dealers. And the money goes where? The the money the money are being shared between the persons who are licensing the guns. You know what happened even at CFR? Now I went into I have the function to check the, the origin of a fire and I'm on the serial number. Right. So now I took, like, let me say I took 10 serial numbers of these suspicious firearms. And mm -hmm. now, now on the serial number, I will find that the, the gun belongs to Solimoe on mm -hmm. the serial number. Mm -hmm. You are the owner of on the gun. Right. On the license, the gun belongs to Patricia Mashali. How does that work? <laughs> How does that work? Surely the person who owns the gun must be the person who owns the license to the gun. And and I, I imagine that the gun, the license should be specific to, to a the particular firearm. So no, you know what happens now? Now you have, uh, I as uh, Patricia Mashali have mm -hmm. now a license for the firearm of Solimoen. Should I be stopped along the way I'm just going to show my license. This right. is my license for right. this gun. This officer doesn't have the function to go and check on the I own I I was the only one who had the function to go check the, the origin of the firearm on the serial number. Then I will find who this gun belong to. That I will find literally the footprint of that gun. I was the only right. one. But I mean, I if I owned the gun and you had the license, you owned the license to the gun I owned, and I went out to commit a crime with a gun, who's responsible? I, you, because the gun belongs to you. But okay. just to make you aware. But wait, 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 just a crime. minute, just a minute before you go on. Now, if I get arrested holding the, with the gun on me, I didn't, I haven't used it for a crime, but I get stopped at a traffic block, whatever. They asked for the gun, and they said, well, here's a gun, it's mine. They said, but where's your license? Mm -hmm. how, if the license is in your name, then how does it work? Like I said, the, the license, you own the license. The license is in your name, okay. but the gun, the, the, the license, like I said, the license is in my name, uh -huh. but the gun is in your name. So oh. this officer will not know. He will let you go with that gun because he will not know since he didn't check the, the oh. serial number okay. of the gun. Right. So what happens? So now you see the syndicate. The people at the, at the National CFR are licensing these guns mm -hmm. to the criminals and no one knows that that gun belongs to Solomon Heng mm -hmm. because Solomon Heng has an actual license for that gun. So no mm. one can go now and check because mm. if applying for a firearm application, the first thing the person that is doing the application at the head office must check mm. the serial number right. on whose name. Now, if the gun, if you bought the gun from the dealer, now mm. the gun must the, the, the gun must be removed from the name of the dealer mm. and the gun must be placed in your name to show right. that. In right. fact, you did buy the gun from the mm. dealer. Now the mm. gun are now removed from the dealer and placed mm. on your name on the system while the person is busy with the application. Right. And the license? So now, what they do now, they mm. just issuing licenses. Right. This is confusing. So I can, is, is it legal for a person to own a gun, but not the license of that gun? Is it legal? No. No, oh. it's unlawful. Okay. You cannot own a gun, okay. but you don't know. I cannot even store your gun, your gun belong to you right, in my right. safe because right. I don't have a license for that gun. Right. Right. Every so, person, your gun must be in your possession. At all so time. basically the rot in the South African police system is widespread, it's deep spread, it's all over the place. It's like a cancer fourth stage. I don't know if you like, stage like, exists. Like and... drug smuggling. Gun smuggling is the is is a huge 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 money making business. Guns are very expensive, and now you must see they 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 love these old guns from the museums. These old war museum guns. Those guns are very expensive. So now, like you said, the guns find their way through Lesotho, through Zimbabwe, through wherever mm. uh, with uh, someone. Even at Lesotho, when you when you enter Lesotho, Lesotho they write you a gun license at the gate. 
You <laughs> enter with a gun at Lesotho, and they just take a paper and write and write a license for you. And, and then you can go back into South Africa and, or else with that license. Enter, yes. Right. And you enter with it gun in Lesotho. We've got a lot of firearms from South Africa in Lesotho, but you'll never find that firearms will find their way somewhere else. They will not come back to the storage facilities. Those firearms, there was a, there was a situation where a truck with firearms fell. It mm. was uh, the year before last. Yeah, I remember we spoke about uh, that. Uh, 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 coincidentally, when the truck 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 fails, Becky Taylor landed on the scene. Wow. Becky Taylor landed on the scene that very day. We, me and my commander was what? like, you to know what? This, this is like this is a very very huge coincidence. What right. are the chances that the, right. a truck fell with unlawful unlawful guns mm. are being transported to Cape Town from Johannesburg to Cape Town, whereby mm. we found I found in the system there's mm. no record of all these dead guns on the system, and a transport permit was issued. How was it done? By the police. By the police. But there's no record of the guns. There's no record. And then Becky Taylor miraculously arrived. Drag hey. force and here is Becky Taylor on the scene. Doing what? Those like, guns. What, what did I don't do? know what happened to those guns. The guns were stored in, in, in Edinburgh storage mm. facility. The, the the person in charge of the firearms there, I called him once and asked him what? Because I gave the case over to, I gave the same case, I gave it over to the Hawks. Mm. I called him and asked, what happened to the guns? He said, the guns is gone. Some people came here and they took the guns. They never even signed for the guns. The guns is gone. What did Becky Taylor do when he arrived? In the uh, he was on the scene there. Came he was the there middle. around. And my oh, the, 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 the reason why I know Becky Taylor was there that day, my commander was called to go to the mm. scene because uh, the Hawks didn't know how to handle the scene. They, they didn't know how to handle the scene. And they found Becky Taylor there on the scene. Patricia Mashale, this is, I, this is, I mean, we can go on and on, but I think that, you know, anyone who follows these conversations, and I'm sure there's going to be another one, there, would, there must be another one, hopefully when we meet again to discuss this, since it'll be about some, there'll be, there would have been light at the end of the tunnel, and you need to be able to walk the streets properly without fearing that somebody's going to shake your hand or give you a drink, and then two days later, you, fall, you, you suddenly have a heart attack, and then we get told, or something happened to her after a short illness. You know, this is, these are the things that happen in South Africa. Lots of people get taken out like this. You know a lot of stuff. And I love you to peace. And I'm, I know that many South Africans love you to peace. We think that you, I believe strongly that you have a role to play. People like you should be in the kind of South Africa, South Africa that we want to to bring back integrity into the system. And, and, and I hope that you are safe. I hope you stay safe. I hope that you remain as vigilant as you have been. You don't accept invitations from strangers to a little coffee somewhere over there because you don't know. You don't know what happens in this world. And, but I'm also very happy that you've been open to share what is going on so that it doesn't just stay with you. Nobody can say they didn't know. And But hopefully Shamila Batohi and others who work with her, you know, will wake up and say, we need to at some point do something for Salavika irrespective of who is the political powerhouse. Yes, only because you know what, this corruption is killing our country. Of course. I'm concerned of what is going to be left when these people are done with our country. And, um, yeah. As long as, so long as I'm here, as long as you still see me, I will keep on pushing until something leaves. There's no option of giving up. Yeah, giving up is not an option. This is the only South Africa we have. Yeah, if we if we let it go, that is the only South Africa there's we no have other South Africa. For all yeah. those who still care, who still love South Africa, I yeah. so hope they they catch a wake up and see that after the South Africa is not is not going to be another one. Yeah, all those ways, Patricia Mashale, thank you very much for making the time to have this conversation with you. I wish you safety, I wish you love, I wish you protection, and I hope that the money that was stolen from you, your pension fund, somehow gets to a point where only you can control it. I know these things will happen. Do not give up, because whether giving up is not an option. And they, they would like to frustrate you, to, to ruin you financially, to make you run around like a little, uh, you know, that uh, animal that in the Karahari that lives all over the place. What do, what do they call it? Yeah, all of us. You're not alone. There are others. There are other whistleblowers out there who are quiet, who some of them.
and have had to leave the, the country because they didn't feel safe. And there are other many people in South Africa who are quiet because they are scared. They are scared of losing their jobs. But this is a community of people that a country that South Africa needs. Do not give up. No, I will never give you a soul. You know, steel must go through the hottest fire. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Even I gold, know. even gold must go through fire before it shows its luster. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye, Patricia. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Solim Wing, Worldview. I'm sure that the conversation speaks for itself. If you have followed up to this point, it means that you continue to enjoy the conversations that we, we host here. At Worldview, I'd like you to please continue sharing the content. Subscribe if you haven't to our to our platform. And for those of you who would like to support this platform, so through, for instance, advertising on it, please write to us at Worldview. Dot it's info at world view dot co info at world view dot co. This is Salim Wing. I shall see you next time. Bye bye.